RSVPs, and that's about it. And uh, we also have the notion of users, as you know, know um, by RSVPs need to kind of correspond to usernames. Well, we're going to let membership handle all the user stuff. We don't need to add any other information in that. So ASP.NET comes with a membership system that is sort of built in. So it's a framework that we don't necessarily need to expand on, not right now, because we don't have a notion of a user that requires any more complexity. Well, all right, we're good to go, and I'll pin this thing back open, and I'll head over to our solution frame. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, some code so we can access these tables. So what I'm going to do next is add a new item. And inside here, I'm going to head down to data, and I'm going to add link to SQL. Now, this is uh, one of Microsoft's Object Relational Mapper, or ORM, tool sets. And I'm going to just simply call this Nerd Dinner, again, keeping my naming constant. And you can see some things are added to our project for us, which is great. And inside here, we now have a new design surface to work on. Now, the way this works, it kind of gives you a little hint down here, but it's pretty basic. You just head over to the Server Explorer, drop open your tables, and I'm going to shift click on these things and drag them in. And there we are. So what this actually uh, is right here, what happened here, is these are now classes that are generated. Now notice my table name was dinners, but this is called dinner. Uh, same with RSVP. So I'm going to go over to properties here. And one thing I want to do is I want to rename this context. I want to call it something a little bit simpler than nerd dinner data context. It's a mouthful. So I'll just call it DB. And in the context namespace, well, I'll just call it nerd dinner. Uh, nerd dinner dot, nope, just call it nerd dinner. And then for the entities, these things right here, these guys, I'm going to call that namespace nerd dinner dot model. So now the full namespace of this object here is nerd dinner dot model dot dinner. Good stuff. Save it, and we have some code generated for us. So that's groovy, and we are ready to go building controllers. My database is set up and the core of my model is ready to go here. And I'm ready to start adding controllers and views. But before I do, I kind of want to talk about an architectural approach that we're going to be using today, building out Nerd Dinner. And that is a RESTful approach. So let's talk about that for a little bit. As I'm building out the site here, I am keeping an eye on using a RESTful architecture. And I'm sure you've heard that term before. Uh, you probably heard it with respect to web services and maybe a debate about REST versus SOAP. Well, REST is actually an architectural style. It's more of an approach to building a website. And you know, believe it or not, you've used RESTful uh, websites uh, a lot. In fact, the entire web can be thought of as being RESTful. I'm not going to get really into that deep of a definition right now. If you'd like to know more, head over to Wikipedia um, or maybe hit a search engine. For right now, in this high-level summary, I would just say you can think of a URL as pointing to a resource. Now, in web forms, uh, we think of those resources as pages, and those pages process data. Uh, an MVC can be a little bit broader than that. Those resources can sense the caller and what kind of data format they want, like JSON or XML. If it's a human, they probably want HTML. Uh, in addition, uh, the, the, uh, the resources act on HTTP verbs, Let's like get, post, put, and delete. Those are treated differently. And uh, finally, you have a standard set of actions. So in ASP.NET MVC, which you'll see in a little bit as I start working with ASP.NET MVC and my views and controllers, uh, you'll see that the standard set of actions are index, details, edit, and create. And so you can think of it this way. And in IS, we don't have the uh, verbs put and delete, so I'm only going to show get and post here. Uh, you can think of it like an interface. So every URL you have, say dinners slash index, well, it has to implement both get and post. So if you pass um, uh, get to it, well, you'll get back a list of all dinners. And say you pass in post, well, it might search dinners. Uh, same with dinners slash details slash one, well, a get would get a single dinner read only. Post, well, that would customize the view in some way. Now, you don't have to implement these things, but this is just one way you could to have a RESTful interface. Again, dinner slash edit slash one, a get would get a editable dinner form. Post would update the dinner. And slash create, well, you get the idea. So I can hear what a lot of people are thinking. I want my own URL scheme. I don't want to have to have the default controller action ID. Uh, and that's okay, you can, because remember, routing is the key to building out your URL scheme. It's always nice to leave a simplified default uh, uh, controller action index style of route in there, but you can definitely build out and customize on top of it. So if you want to have something like mysite.com slash dinner 2000 slash monkey, well, you certainly can. It can still go to the dinner controller index method, and you can still keep the default action in there. So that's how I'm going to proceed today. 
So what I'm going to do right now is I want to add my first controller. And since I'm working with dinners so far, I'm going to add a dinner controller. And now I mentioned previously those methods, those standard methods. Well, here they are. Create, update, detail scenarios. Uh, index is going to be in there because index is the default action for any controller. So I'm going to say, OK, add this thing in. And let's take a look at what we got to our brand new dinner controller. And you can see in here we have a bunch of methods. These are called actions, and they return this thing called an action result. We'll talk more about why we return this, but for right now, just know that the uh, engine that catches these calls right here expects this result, and you can think of it as your HTML holder. So we have an index method. This is the default one. We have details. Uh, this shows an individual one. You can see here by the URL. Same thing with the create. And you notice that we have an overload for create. This is what I was mentioning previously. This one works with get. This one works with post. We delineate between these two methods by this attribute. And we do the same thing with edit down here. OK, well, this might look incredibly foreign to people, and that's OK. What I'd like to do now is to show you how this all hangs together. We have our controller, so let's go ahead and grab some data and throw it out onto a view. And to do this, I am going to kick up a new link to SQL context. So what I'm going to do is double click that, and all you have to do is pass it down that way. Just pass it as a parameter into the return statement, and you're good to go. OK, well now, how do I create a, a, a set of uh, views for this? Well, what I could do is come down here to my views folder. Notice how these directories correspond to the names up here. Well, one of the things you got to know is that, again, MVC is based on con convention here. And the names of the controllers are considered this prefix here, account, dinner, home. Uh, con it is expected that they end with controller. But notice also down here that each of these things has a corresponding directory down below. Uh, inside account, we have a bunch of different views for the account controller to use. And each one of these things corresponds to these actions. So with our dinner controller, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to have an index view created for us. Now I could just come in here, right click, create a directory called dinner, and inside of it put an index view. Or I could rely on the tooling. And since I'm lazy, uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit add view. And it knows, since we're inside the index action, that we are going to be using uh, the index view name. Next thing I want to do, and this is really cool, I want to create a strongly typed view. Now my view data class, if I drop this open, it's going to, oh, it didn't find it for me because I need to come up here and compile the application. I'll hit build. There we go. I make that mistake all the time. And so we're going to come back down here again. View data class. There we are. NerdDinner.model.dinner. Now we hit OK. Next up, the view content. This is important stuff. Remember what we were talking about in terms of REST. Well, here we go again. Create, details, edit, empty, list. Well, the index view, we can have it be anything, or the index action and the index view. We can have it show anything we want, but ideally, we should kind of keep with conventions. So let's just show a list of data. And the rest of it we can keep as it is. So we hit Add, and the tooling adds in a directory for us. It adds in the index view for us. It adds in a page with a nice table that's going to show a list of all data, which is great. And one of the cool things is since we're using link to SQL, the tooling is able to go in and figure out what our primary key is, dinner ID. So it's able to work with the HTML helpers, this guy, and I'll talk more about those in a bit, to build links for us and all that good stuff. So this is good to go right here. In fact, if I hit Run, which I can just hit F5, and the application comes up. And I'll come in here and type in dinner. And here we go. This is our page.